Hello, everybody. My name is Amalia Weber. I am the program specialist here at Rochester Hills Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to this evening's program, Cool Things in the Universe. Before we get started, I'd like to take care of a few housekeeping details. Firstly, tonight's program will be recorded and available to view about one week from tonight on our YouTube page and on the RHPL website shortly after. We ask the audience members please silence or turn off their, their cell phones before we begin in order to avoid any disturbances during the presentation. Our next program is the final concert in our 2022 summer concert series presenting the band Giacomo. This will be an in-person event on Thursday, August 25th at 6 p.m. Registration is required, so be sure to sign up at calendar.rhpl.org. And now, without further ado, please welcome our presenter, Jerry Chevrier. Thank you. What we're gonna talk about tonight is uh, cool things in space. Space, to us, is pretty cool. Um, I'm what they call a solar system ambassador for NASA. I don't get paid, it's volunteer. I've been doing it for about 12 years. So I go to schools and libraries and universities and we talk about astronomy so they're always looking for somebody that's crazy over the edge Who, who's over the edge like in playing golf or something well mine's astronomy it's like way over the edge um, so we're going to talk about i think what's cool in the universe is first the universe uh, neutron stars black holes dark energy dark matter and then we're going to talk about probably the biggest thing nasa has done on, uh, is the launch of the webb telescope Okay, um, I want to introduce John. I'm part of, also part of the Oakland Astronomy Group. And you guys got at me because we have some big telescopes right here at Addison Oaks. So if you want to come out, uh, we invite the public once, one night a, a month, right John? Yeah, one night a month you'd get an email from us if you're interested. And we will tell you that we're at Addison Oaks. We have a deck with two big telescopes on it, one you gotta get in the ladder to look in the eyepiece. So you're gonna be seeing some cool things like s star clusters, nebulas, galaxies. Uh, we're not gonna be seeing the moon because we do it when there's no moon, but tonight's gonna be a moon. So um, the other thing is who here would like to come back, at, we're done at 8.30, come back at 9.30 and look through some telescopes, look at the moon, in planets, star cluster, and I think I can get a nebula in. No pressure, if you don't want to do it, we won't set up our scopes. So, anybody interested? One guy, oh, what? two guys, three guys, four, five. All right, we'll set it up for you guys. Have you ever seen a nebula or a star cluster? You have, okay, that's gonna be cool. Oh, we went through this. Uh, on the left is a star cluster, just to give you an idea. I think there's around 1,200 of them in our galaxy, in our uh, galaxy, and it's, it's a strange thing uh, to have 200,000 stars in one location. You imagine living in the middle of that? You, first of all, you'd be dead, but let's say you could. Uh, isn't that strange? And in the southern hemisphere, we've, you know, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, there's a cluster that's got a million stars. So you're ever down south in the southern hemisphere, and you don't know anybody in astronomy, uh, I have them show you that. The next one's a galaxy, and then stars, everything ro rotates around this thing called a star, and I have an example of a star compared to the size of the Earth. And I'm gonna pass this around because this has gotta be six inches bigger, okay? I couldn't get it in my car, so. This is as big as it gets, but I want to show you how small the Earth is compared to the sun, all right? So we look at when suns lose their nuclear reaction, they blow up, right? They've been supernovas, and it's sometimes become a nebula, and then planets, of course. Who knows what this is? Ah, yeah. What is it? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's about to... We went crazy, I don't know if you remember this, but we went crazy when that thing went up. You get a NASA sticker, man, all right. And then when you peel it off, you gotta peel it off, well, well, start here, okay, because right. if you don't, it rips off. Why, you got one already? Yeah, I put it on my uh, scalpel here, so yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, we, they put this thing up in 1957, the Russians did, and all it did was go around and go like this, watch. Beep, beep. <laughs> and we went, ah! So the government uh, started a program. Who knows what this means? You do? Okay, we're gonna, we'll, we'll do it together. National? Oh. Nah. Anybody else? Okay. You spent a lot of your tax money <laughs> on this. The Webb Telescope cost $10 billion to put up. National Aeronautical Space Administration. Um, they've done some really cool things. I, I think you guys know what this is, right? Yeah, and this did it right here. Saturn V rocket. Uh, this is amazing. If you, uh, today's rocket, SpaceX, and NASA's building one to go to the moon again, they're only, they're only about this much bigger. This is a mammoth rocket. I mean, um, let's pass the guy around. This is the size of the guy. And we built 14 of them. It's an amazing, it's an amazing feat that we did this in the 60s. Oh my gosh, 60s. Anyway, that's what that resulted in right there. You guys know what that is, right? Of course. <laughs> when I do this, a lot of people, what? Is the International Space Station? You guys remember this? And it went out of business, kind of? And where did we go to get our rockets in space? Yeah, isn't that great? Great, 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 great. Who knows what this is? I got you. <laughs> This is our new program, NASA's new program to go to the moon. So if you want to see what we're doing, we're, they're testing a rocket right now. It's a little bigger than this, but it's a big rocket. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the moon. Uh, they're going to be launching it. John, do you know when it launch? I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, nobody in it, okay, the first time. They're going to shoot it out, go around the moon, come back. So anyway, that's the name of the new program. A lot of money going into that. And this thing is remarkable, stunning, unbelievable, the Webb Telescope. We're going to go into that a little bit. Oh, I can't get over the rocket, sorry. <laughs> Here, here's the rocket, Saturn V, and, and this is uh, at SpaceX. And this is the rocket they're building. It's called the uh, Space Launch System. And they're rolling this out right now, actually. And they're going to be launching this soon to go back to the moon. If you have any questions, you can just say, hey, I got a question. All right, man. The last I read was the problem, right? But I've been watching the Webb Telescope for 10 years, and all I got was problem, 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 pro I mean, that thing, I didn't think it was going to work. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. But it, it's a remarkable thing that they did. It took them a long time. They were behind schedule forever, right? Had to redesign it, all of that. But what a great achievement that it did what it did. Uh, so, yeah, they had some issues. They're going to have issues all the time with these things, you know. Who knows what this is? <laughs> teacher's Pat. I love Teacher's Pat. It's the Hubble Telescope. That's out there right now. It's been out there 20, ah, what's, oh, I don't have the year on there. 30 years? It's remarkable. It was remarkable. I mean, they got books on just the Hubble images. I should have brought mine. Anyway. So we're replacing that. It's still working. Here's what happened. That thing went in the air, undid itself, and didn't work. Anybody remember that? Johnny Carson had a heyday with this thing. So they had to go up and put new glasses. They, they had in Time Magazine a pair of glasses. and said, we've got to put new glasses on the big telescope that we sent millions of dollars to put up. But since then, it's worked great. This is the Webb Telescope. It's named after James Webb. He was the second administrator for NASA, and uh, we're going to get into this a little bit later. So this is a pitch for all you kids. 
NASA, you can work for them. If you go to school, math and science, you can become astronauts or just do space study or work at a big telescope somewhere, a radio telescope. They hire about 80,000 people a year. I mean, 80,000 people. They have 80,000 people working for them, uh, but they're all over the country. Oop. That was supposed to be the red thing. Ah, all right. So I'm putting a pitch in for them. This is our telescopes that we have at uh, Addison Oaks. We got a deck here with a big telescope, and we all, all of us bring out telescopes. Probably on that night, we'll probably have 12 telescopes set up. All right, I'm gonna talk about speed, okay? You guys like speed? Speed, man, speed. Arr. All right, so that's a dragster, right? It goes about 320 miles per hour. That's, that's pretty fast. I think it's fast. This is a rocket that went 10,000, and this is a spy set, a, a, a plane we had uh, back in the day, and it went about 2,000. I think the speed record's been broke, but at the time I did the slide, it was 24,000 miles per hour, and it was a, this rocket right here. But I'm going to talk about speed of light. Anybody know the speed of light? Another sticker. All right, what is it? What is it? 386,000 miles per second. No, 186,000 miles per That's pretty close. Yeah. Well, that would be, you'd be going back in time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Ma in, the, in the math, right? You'd be going backwards. But anyway, speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. So I'm in my spaceship here. Who watched Star Trek as a, in, a, in the 70s, let's just say, say that. And they got some new ones out. They're not bad here. You'd be my spaceman. All right, so now I'm in my spaceship, and I'm going to go to the speed of light, and I say, hit it, and you go, hit it. Stop. One second later, one second, how many times did I go around the world? <laughs> cool. Seven. If you, don't, if you don't want to, you can give it to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, seven times. It's pretty fast, isn't it, if you think about it. So you want to go to the moon, right? How, how in my spaceship, first of all, you can't go to speed of light now, unless you watch Dune, we can pull in space, or black, <laughs> all kinds of theories. Um, and I want to go to the moon, it would take me, how long do you think? One and a half seconds. One and a half seconds. Mars. 12 minutes. Not bad, eh? Pluto. That's our last. I still call it a planet. If you want to discuss it with me, it'd be great. A lot of politics. It all came from the eastern block of countries because we found Pluto here in the United States. I never forgot it. Anyway, I sidetrack once in a while. So we're going to Pluto, and if you're in school, say, no, it's not a planet. It's a, you know, right, okay, say that. I don't want you to get a bad mark. Since you're going to be an astronaut. Okay. The, boop, Pluto, how long? Speed of light. Four hours. Well, I'm going to round it up. Five. Okay. So I went here, Earth to the moon. Now I went to Pluto. <gasps> Pluto, dwarf planet. Who put that on there? All right, Pluto, it was four hours. Now I want to go to the next star. The next star. The closest star to us. How long? Ah, just take a guess. Who said four years? Yeah, four years. <laughs> it, that's amazing. That we are in the middle of nowhere. Think about what I just said. From, the, well, let's say the sun to Pluto, the whole system, the speed of light is six hours. I'm going to round it up a little bit. Six hours. Now I'm in the same spaceship, and it takes me four years, not minutes, years, to get to the next star. 
we're out in the middle of nowhere, which is really good for us. Getting tired of holding this? All right. Which is really good for us because it's nice to be away from the, our galaxy. A lot of bad things are happening in the galaxy, neutron stars, uh, gamma rays, meteorites, a lot, of, a lot of things. So the fact that we're isolated is a really good thing for us. Now, I'm in my, I want to go to the next, well, I'm going to get in our galaxy. What's the name of our galaxy? Don't answer. <laughs> Come on, what's the name of our galaxy? Yeah, did you get a sticker? Yes. You almost got it. Get the next one. So now I'm in my spaceship, and I'm here. This was kind of devastating me in college. I'll tell you why in a minute. Let's say I'm here, and I want to go over here. How many years at the speed of light? Seven. Just how many? Seven. Seven. Anybody else? 100,000 years. So that told me when I found that out that Star Trek never left the galaxy. I always thought they were flying from galaxy to galaxy, all through college. How stupid was I? Anyway, this show, but I had to go see a psychiatrist after that. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, so, so we're living in a pretty big galaxy, a medium-sized galaxy, and we're right, oh, sorry, push the wrong button. No, oh, dark energy, geez. Sorry. Right there, the third arm. And that's good, because if we were any closer, we'd be dead. Okay? So that's a good spot for us <laughs> right there. And this is a picture of our galaxy taken across several points on the globe and put together. Who's, who's been in the desert at night? Was there a moon? Well, what'd you think? Oh, so I have property in New Mexico in an astronomy village. I told you I was over the edge, right? Um, and I went out, first of all, in this astronomy village, you can't have a light. So everything's got to be red, red light. So I get out of the place I was staying in, and I couldn't see right here. I mean, it was scary, right? You kind of, you see a red light over there, and there's some people, and you go over there. And uh, I looked up in the sky, and there was no moon, and, and it blew me away. So if you're ever in the desert, stop at night and look up in the sky. I mean, it was just like this. I couldn't find a Big Dipper. I even had a compass north. I had no idea. There were so many stars. It was, it's remarkable. Okay. Okay, next question. You guys ready? Kids, you ready? What's the name of the next galaxy to us? Good. You got, you got a sticker already, though, didn't you? All right, you got a sticker, because you knew it was a drama, huh? right? All right, so I'm in my little spaceship that I took from you, and you go hit it. Hit it. Okay, how long before I get there? The next galaxy. 2.5 million light years. So are we going to see anybody from this galaxy? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it's, and this is because of the gravitational pull is coming toward us a long ways away. So that tells you about the distance of stuff, right? I mean, we are, we are a speck in the middle of some big universe. Okay, this is the other thing besides Star Trek not leaving our galaxy that blew me away. If you take all the things you see in the sky, you take all the stars, the planets, the nebulas, star clusters, everything you can see, it only makes up 4% of the universe. I went, what? <laughs> I, I, I didn't expect this. 4%. And the rest of it is dark matter and dark energy. And we know about that much of that. And there's a lot of money being spent right now. If I get time, I'm going to go into how they're studying neutrinos, and maybe if we have, we have the time. But I want to leave some time for questions. So that, that kind of blew me away. So what do we know about our universe? Very little. <laughs> I mean, you know all the stars and galaxies, but it's only 4%. Okay, so this is a, this could be outdated by, because the universe is expanding all the time. At this time, this slide was made, it was a 93 billion light years. 
across our whole universe. All right, we're going to go to the sun because everything starts with the sun that we have. And again, uh, I passed this around so you guys saw the size of the earth. Pretty small. So we're going to talk, we're going to talk about the sun. Right now, um, the sun, these dates should be changed. I didn't change them, but we're just starting. The sun goes in a cycle of sun activity and solar flares. Who's heard lately about solar flares? It's in the paper every day. It's because the activity is going up. It was in flat, and now it's in the 11-year cycle, and it's for the next five and a half years, you're going to be reading, I bet you, once a week about a solar flare because the activity is, is really increasing. And uh, we have solar telescopes. So if you ever want to look at the sun and look at a flare, uh, let us know. So this is the other thing that kind of took me away is the size of our sun compared to some of the other suns. And I'm going to point out our sun. It's a pixel about that big. Look at these guys. Huge. Uh, so we got a medium star, uh, but there are some giants out there. And when these guys go supernova, they light up the whole galaxy. If they went out, you'd see it. And they become either a black hole or a neutron star, and we're going to talk about that. But everything starts with this guy right here, the sun. So uh, NASA has several telescopes already looking at the sun. They're called SOHO telescopes. One's on one side and one's on the other, and that's how they spot all these things. But this thing got launched in 2018, the Parker probe, and it's going to go right across the sun like this. I don't know how they do it. It's pretty hot. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be doing that. John, I don't know when, this year, next? It's made several passes, but not right through the corona, right? Yeah. So if you're interested in the sun, uh, Google the Parker Solar Probe, and it'll give you the latest update on what they're doing with the sun. All right. The sun amazes me. The other thing that I found out about the sun, it's called solar winds, okay? So there are particles coming across, being shot out into our, our all around the sun. And the solar winds are a million miles an hour. And planets like ours survive because we have this thing called, what's that called? Magnetic field. If you don't have one, you're dead because of this guy. So that's the problem with Mercury <laughs> and Venus. Their, their atmospheres got stripped. Now, Venus has a little bit of an atmosphere. That's why it's hotter there than Mercury. Uh, but Mars, is part of its atmosphere is gone. So if we ever lose our magnetic field, run for the hills, we ain't going to make it. So. That's where the auroras come from, right? So you have the solar flare coming in, hitting the magnetic field that shields us from these solar winds, and it goes to the north and it lights up, you know, usually in the north, right? Northern Canada and into Russia and stuff. So that, that is an amazing thing. And this is amazing, the fact that we got this magnetic field. So a lot of things got to go right to have life, not just closest to the sun in the, you know, they call Goldilocks region, but you need a magnetic field, it's real huge. And this thing goes out quite a ways. So our sun, it puts out those solar winds at a million miles an hour, and right here it starts to slow down a little bit, but still goes all the way out. And so we've got a, we're going through the universe in this bubble that's called a heliosphere, and this is the outside of the universe colliding with this bubble. <laughs> and so Voyager 1 and 2, do you guys remember Voyager 1 and 2? Uh, they just left this area. They've been gone since, what, 50s, 60s? 60s. 85? Okay, they've been gone a long time. Remember Stark? Star thing, what was it called? One of them came back. It was a Star Trek one. 
Yeah. <laughs> I thought about that the other day. So this, this hill spirit goes quite a ways out. So the suns, uh, remember I told you in one location there was 200,000 suns? Can you imagine the craziness of that? I mean, you have magnetic winds from everywhere. It would be, it would be something. Oop, blank slide. Oh, I put that in and they asked me a question. Remember I told you there was a star cluster uh, in the southern hemisphere? This is it right here. And it's got 10 million, oh, it's got 10 million stars, not 1 million, 10 million. And it's about 150 light years away. If you ever, I haven't done this, it's on my bucket list. Uh, this is my favorite galaxy, Sombrero Galaxy. So what's making up all these? These guys right here, these suns. Everything starts with this sun. So this is uh, really, doesn't it look like a Mexican hat a little bit? Bear with me, just say, okay, Jerry. <laughs> uh, these are really cool, these nebulas. Again, remember, star, star goes supernova. It's going to become one of three things. One of them is a nebula. And inside this nebula, and we get a, we get a good view of this nebula. If you come out one night, we'll give you a, a real good view of this nebula. Okay, we're going to talk about black holes. I need some of you guys. F four guys, four astronauts. Come here. All right, you guys got to pull on this sheet for me. So everybody used your imagination. This is the fabric of space. And in it, it's time. Don't forget about time. <laughs> All right, grab, grab an edge. Need an edge over here. Need a guy over here. Stretch it out. Oh, oh, take that corner. Stretch it real tight. Tight as you can. Yeah. Yes. So now there's a sun sitting in it. Remember, everything starts with the sun. Tight, tight, tight. Here's the sun. It bends the fabric of space because it bend, it's bending space. And our planets are caught in this. This would be a little lower. Let loosen up a little bit right there. Our planets are caught in this tube of this bent space, and that's why we're not flying away. And gravity is caused by, well, I'm not going to get into gravity, but we're held into this area. Okay, tighten it back up. Now, put my son back. Supernova. Whoa! <laughs> Waves through space. What happens when a sun goes super, we're going to go over it a little bit, but when it goes supernova, it becomes real heavy. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. Oh, <laughs> One second. Okay, hang on, two hands. Ah. See what happens? There's a hole in space. You guys loosen it up a little bit so it becomes more and more of a hole. That's what happens when the star goes supernova. And remember the big ones, those super giants? They collapse on themselves because their nuclear energy stopped. The gravity pushes in, I'm gonna explain it in a minute, and it puts a hole in space, and that's what a black hole is. And they're so hard to see because they're called what? Yeah, okay guys. You don't have to worry about that when you're going to Mars and, and stuff, don't worry about it. Just go watch a movie or something. All right, so black holes. First of all, uh, if you get into a black hole, you're not coming out. Light doesn't even come out. Um, so it's a very, it's a one of the strangest things in the universe. And what happens is, in a normal sun, when you have a nuclear reaction going on here, it pushes out, and space is pushing in, but it's at equilibrium, right? It's, it's what our sun's doing right now. Nothing's collapsed, nothing. But when that nuclear reaction in the middle of the sun stops, then the pressure from the gravity pushes it and it consolidates it. Does that make sense? And it becomes really, really heavy like that <laughs> thing. And it pushes on the fabric of space and makes a hole. If you got questions, ask me. <laughs> this, is a, this is a representation, you know, it's not the real image, right? Uh, artist did it. But it kind of talks about what I was talking about. There is a hole in the time fabric of space. And 
if you're here and you're going down, you ain't coming out. Uh, there's a lot of things. And Event Horizon is the area around it. And I'm going to show you two pictures that were taken of a black hole, both in our, I think, both, both in our galaxy. All right. Well, okay. There's different kind of black holes. Um, one is one is uh, electrical black hole, and the other one's an electrical. What's it? What's it called? Something else. Electrical mm, black hole. Oh, spinning electrical black hole. So, uh, a common misunder uh, misconception of black holes: uh, that they don't suck. <laughs> you know, they're not. Sucking, but if you get caught in a gravitational area, you're going to go in. All right, there's no getting out of it. Uh, but they don't suck. If our, first of all, if our sun became a black hole, we'd be dead, right? But let's say it became a black hole and we're still living, <laughs> theorize, uh, we wouldn't get sucked into it. We may sooner or later get caught in this gravitational, right, pull, but we're not going to get sucked into it. All right, so what took a picture of a black hole? It's called Event Horizon. And there are telescopes located all around the world, and they coordinate on a, one object in space, okay? So if you're ever interested, these are the, these are the six telescopes, and uh, you can Google it and see where they're at and what they are. But here's the first image, it was in 2019. So that event horizon, remember where the hole is? The energy that's getting pulled in by its gravitational wave is that's the event horizon. That's the black hole. And the only reason we see it is because there's energy being, not sucked, <laughs> being caught in the gravitational pull of that black hole. And sometimes they put out a big, uh, I call it a burp. You know, particles being burped. Uh, it hasn't been in the black hole. They've been horizon. Somehow it gets, uh, but they don't have a picture of that uh, yet. And then this year, this one. And this is in our galaxy in the middle. All right, pulsars. So we went through black holes. Anybody got a question on a black hole? I know I didn't, I didn't get into the physics of it, but uh, I usually don't. Oh, oh, yeah. going inside. If it's on the event horizon, it's inside it. It's already got pulled into its mag to its gravitational force. So it's going in. It pulls in stars. That's usually what it's pulling in. Big stars. It's kind of amazing. Um, because the star starts to get stripped. And it gets and that's where the burp comes. Burp. They go I'll show you a picture of it. Anything else? Okay. Oh, I didn't even talk about that. All right, remember the guys were out here and they did that thing and it, that's the same thing the pulsar is made of. Again, you've got the sun and it goes supernova and it's got to be bigger than the, uh, our sun. And what happens is that, let's say that you had a sun 10 times that size. It, when, once its nuclear reaction stops and it consolidates on itself, the neutron star is the most heaviest thing in the universe. This star, wrap this around, bigger than ours, 10 times, goes down to 10 miles. Right here. 10 miles on the Earth. And the Earth is, how big is the Earth? <laughs> so it's, it's all neutrons, electrons, protons, everything got squashed. It's the most heaviest element that we know of. And what happens is once it's in this state, it spins, and I got a really good sound of this thing spinning. Uh, and it puts out an emission. And it's like a, um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be like, like a lighthouse, right? <laughs> you know a lighthouse, how it's spinning? Well, these things are spinning uh, a lot faster <laughs> than a lighthouse, sometimes a thousand times around it per second. Uh, and that's getting shot out into space. These, these, this, uh, light thing, emissions, 
If you're in a spaceship, guys, and you're going somewhere and you see a neutron star, turn around, go the other way, quick. Because if this hits you, uh, it's going to be really bad. And the magnetic field on this thing is, it, because of the density of it, it's just it's mind-blowing. It, it will disrupt anything in its, in its orbit. And we, we have, when things blow up, they b become waves, right? Think of, you're swimming in a, in a lake and you drop something in, you know how the waves go like this? Well, they've got, a, they've got things on the Earth, we get to it, I don't think we're gonna get to it, but they detect gravitational waves from things that happen in the universe. They've got two neutron stars that collided. That's, that is the Big Bang. And they picked up those gravitational waves here in, in, we've got six places around the world that look for gravitational waves, and they picked them up from these two neutron stars billions of miles out, uh, light years, miles, light years. So these things are very, um, uh, first of all, they're dangerous because of the magnetic waves that uh, the magnetic field that they got in this pulsar that's coming out of them. Very strange thing. Oh, that's that picture that shows they end up being six to ten miles wide. Remember how big that star was? Remember how little? That's like tiny, tiny, tiny compared to what it was. So that's a pulsar star. All right, what's the similarities first of a neutron star and a black hole? Uh, Stars die, you know, both of them got to go supernova, right? They got to blow up. The, the nuclear fission's got to stop. It's got to collapse on itself. Um, they're both extremely dense. Uh, the neutron star is more dense. Very strong magnetic waves, especially in the neutron star. Uh, but the black holes are bigger, right? They're huge. So they've got, they got, they've got uh, the gravitational pull, too. Um, oh. Space and time. I'm not going to get in space and time. Okay, now the difference is black holes are usually larger in mass, and they're telling us now, NASA's telling us now, there's a black hole in the center of all, all galaxies, and there could, could be up to thousands of black holes in our galaxy. We haven't found them yet, right? But the theorize that every galaxy has a huge black hole in the center. And remember that picture I showed you, the second one? That was the center of our galaxy's black hole. Uh, neutron stars are a lot brighter than black holes because black hole is black. <laughs> uh, and neutrons is denser. It's more dense than anything in the universe. So there's some differences between uh, a neutron star and a black hole. Um, I'll tell you what this is. When the universe went into the Big Bang, there are satellites, think of a firecracker, boom, big, and you know the afterglow after a fire, you know how it just lights up a little bit? This is the lit up part of the Big Bang, and NASA has satellites out taking pictures of it, and it's, uh, it's all about the heat, what's hot and what's cold, not cold, but not burning hot, right? So the difference in temperature, so that's, the image of the Big Bang. Uh, we can talk about that, but that's what that is. This is Webb Telescope. Everybody go, yeah! Yeah! No, no, no. yeah! yeah! I've been waiting 10 years for this thing. Yeah. All right, here it is. Oh, I got another cool video, and I can't show you that. First of all, this thing went up in a rocket in December. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And it was folded up. And I wish I could show you the video. It had to unfold in space. And you have a $10 billion telescope that if one of the gears didn't work, it wouldn't work. That's, I didn't think it was going to work, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but it unfolded. It, it, was, it was remarkable. Anyway, it went up in a rocket, all folded in the cone. And this is the size of the Hubble, and this is the size of, of the web. So they're not, they're pretty, what's a big difference is the size of the mirror. Okay? This is the size of both of them, pretty much a tennis court kind of size, okay? 
And this is uh, what's remarkable about where this telescope is. First of all, the Hubble was just in a low orbit around the Earth, right? I think it's 586 miles, or I forget. But it was very low. And so when it didn't work, we were able to take the space shuttle that we had right at the time, and we were able to go up, and the guys got out, the astronauts got out, which are you guys, and you fixed it. Well, this thing went out a million miles. It went past the moon, and it's out here. It's called Lagrange Point. It, it, there's places in space that the gravity is equal to the gravity out here, the gravity there. So it's, it stays in orbit, and it stays behind the Earth the whole time going around the sun. So it was a million miles out, and if there was something wrong with it, that'd be it. We couldn't fix it. So that's what I'm scared about. This is the size of the mirror, so you can see that the bigger the mirror, the more you can see. That makes sense, right? And I always thought this was cool. The telescope, the mirrors are coated in gold. <laughs> Everybody go, ooh, I did, ooh. Now, it's not a lot of gold, it's very thin, but because of the temperature that's out there. And I'll talk about that in a minute. All right, we're going to talk about, not a lot, but just a little bit. When light comes from the sun, you see color because you're in visible light. That makes sense, right? You get a prism, you break the light. In light, all light is wavelengths. So this wavelength is our ability to see visibly. The more you go over here, the waves get smaller. This is called ultraviolet. And then you go to the dentist. I just went to have my teeth clean, and x-ray, and I wasn't happy about it because I knew the waves were real close. <laughs> and the more they're closer, the more energy there is. That's why they put that, leather, that lead thing around you. Anyway, I didn't get into it with them. Uh, and so... On the other side of it, oh, sorry, keep hitting the wrong button. Ah, oh, man, really went crazy. On the other side of it is infrared, all right? So the Hubble did mostly visible and a little bit of ultra, ultra, uh, infrared. The web does a lot more infrared. I have an infrared camera here, and afterwards, if you want to get a picture of you in infrared, We'll do it. I, I think it's cool. <laughs> Who remembers seeing Predator, the first one? That was infrared. The guy in the tree looking down, he was using infrared. Senses heat. So I, we got we to. Gotta. So let's take a look at this. Let's say we're looking at this galaxy, and we're outside tonight. We're not going to see a galaxy because of the moon, but if you, we saw a galaxy, this is the milk, uh, Whirlpool galaxy. It's in the Big Dipper, all right? And this is visible. When Webb looks at it, Webb can look here, but mostly here. It gets rid of what? All the dust, all the stuff that's in the way of the stars. So it gets a really better image of what's out there. This is done in ultraviolet, X-ray. So different ways, and, and NASA has telescopes for each one of these. All right, we have a telescope that just does X-ray. We have a telescope. <laughs> All right, so they have telescopes up doing this stuff. Uh, but the, the, the one that is remarkable is going to be the web because it's so far out. It's a million miles out. And they're looking. It, it is visible, but mostly uh, in the infrared. And they're going to see a lot more of that stuff. And then there's radio, right? Radio telescopes. So a lot of different types of telescopes. All right, and this is looking at uh, the Crab Nebula in both of those. Here, I have a telescope. If, if there was no moon tonight, we could look at the Crab Nebula, and we would see this. Not as good as this, but we would see this. This is infrared, so it, so it, it, it got, uh, and this is radio, ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma rays. So we're going to talk about the Big Bang. I'm not going to get into detail about this, but uh, I want to show you how far we think the Webb telescope is going to go back in time. Does that make sense? The beginning of time? Okay. All right, so Big Bang, all heat. Remember the, the thing I showed you with all the heat? 
That's where it got caused. And that's nothing but plasma. And there's no electrons. There's no protons. There's nothing. It's just heat, hot. It gets expanded out here. Then all of a sudden, electrons, protons, right, start. We get, we get some material we can build on. And then what happens is galaxies start, OK? So we get a star. Out here is not this is hot plasma just coming out. And then after it cools down, it electrons, protons, uh, develop elements, and then you get a star and you get galaxies, and then you know, galaxies more, and then we're you know, the universe is expanding. We're hoping to look back to this time right here. There's nothing here to see. This is all be hot. But we're looking to see the first galaxy. And they have a picture that they believe is close to the first galaxy, the first picture that came out. Who saw it? President Biden was on the phone trying to uh, in, in the thing, and he had to get involved, you know, and all that stuff. Do you have any questions about this? I know it's kind of crazy. Uh, oh, I already did that. All right, this is the first picture that came out. And you're looking at all galaxies. And you're probably looking at... <laughs> that much of space, right, in the sky, just a little bit, and they're all galaxies. So this, this was remarkable, and this was done, Hubble used to do these deep space images, but it would be for days. This is just an hour. I just opened it up and took a picture. And what's really exciting about this, is this is a cluster of galaxies, and what happens behind that, the first galaxies are there, I know this may not make a lot of sense, but it's, the light's coming from them. Then they hit this cluster, and they go around the cluster. Does that make sense? Like, if you're looking, the sun comes out, and, and uh, there's a solar eclipse, and you see light coming around the moon because the light travels and then follows the gravitational wave of, of the object. So it's going to go around it. So right here, these little, see these little slivers? They are galaxies behind these galaxies, <laughs> okay? And that's where they believe they're going to get the, fr they're, the next image is going to be even deeper. But right here, here, you can see where the cluster is because they're all around it. And the light comes right here, here, here. And the rest of these are all galaxies too. When I first saw that, I went, wow. <laughs> Everybody go, wow, come on. Wow. <laughs> yes, very good. You know how light travels and it'll, it'll follow the, okay, you got it. That's what it's called. This is the next one. This is a nebula. Uh, and so I want to show you how big our whole solar system is. The sun all the way to Pluto is about this big, that little dot there. That's the size of our solar system. And that's just a nebula. Most nebulas are like that. They're hundreds of light years across. We, we're four hours, five hours of the speed of light. These are 100 light years. I mean, we're not, I don't know how you find us in space. We're just this little tiny little thing out in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, this is, uh, uh, and what's, what's, I'm not going to get into the image, but uh, this is the net, one of the, the next ones that was there. And this is uh, my screensaver on my computer right now. <laughs> this is another, uh, this is a nebula, right? Star blows up, the gases go out, the stars behind it get lit, lit, light up all the gas, and it becomes a nebula. This one's what? 2,000 light years away. Which is a lot, 2,000. I think that first one was, did I have a time on it? Did I have anything on that one? Uh, this was 7,000. What was the other one? Oh, this is four billion. <laughs> four billion. So the whole universe is nine something. No, that's trillion. Uh, yeah, but uh, they. So that's man. I'm like, we're not going to get that with our telescopes, John. <laughs> uh, this is the nebula. Uh, isn't it cool that star in the middle? These are. Uh, this, this is two galaxies colliding. You know, I told you Andromeda is coming toward us in a trillion years or something, you know? It's going to, they have pictures of galaxies, lots of them,
colliding. And that's a picture of one right there. And all of these are galaxies. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, one of the really cool things about Webb that Hubble had nothing is that it can look at an image and then tell you what's in the image. And this is water, you know, what's in it? Nitrogen, hydrogen. So it's got all these instruments on it. When they look at an object, they can tell you what it's made up of. And what this is really good for is when they're looking for planets, right? Think about it. If you look for a planet, they find an actual planet coming across, you know, and they can point the web at it, and the web will say, hey, here's this atmosphere. We've never been able to do that, ever. So this is pretty, pretty remarkable. It's got a lot of instrumentation on it. Oh, this is, I think this just got released. 500 million light years out. <laughs> Whoa. That's startling. Oh, okay. So I'm going to give you guys, I'll let you make it. 8.30, we're done. We can take questions, or I can talk to you about neutrinos. Who wants to know about neutrinos? Nobody's looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Am I crazy? All right. I, I like to talk about it. Uh, because this is a big study, and you, you'd be amazed at some of the things we're trying to do to capture these things. And there's a relationship between neutrinos and dark matter. We don't know what it is yet, but they think there is. All right. So how many go through you in one second? <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, whoa, what's going through me? Neutrinos are going right through. It goes right through the earth. It just keeps going. And I had no idea that that was happening to me, that 100 trillion neutrons pass through me every second. You imagine if you could harvest that somehow, and the, you know, energy? Or, I, I don't know. But, uh, so I'll, one of the places we're looking for these neutrinos is the South Pole. So these guys get on this plane, and they land. I'm going to show you the facility. And they're there, and they're there. You get hurt, you better have a dot. You ain't going nowhere, because you only can land and take off certain parts of the year. Think about it. There's a lot of money here. I'm, you know, I, didn't, I had no idea that we were spending so much money to looking for neutrinos. And it's called the Ice Cube. You got to Google it. Google Ice Cube. Uh, and these are, of course, auroras because solar winds, they got to be going crazy right now uh, with solar winds uh, hitting the, the magnetic field. And um, they, they go in and, and they, they dug a mile and a half into the ice, a mile, that's a lot, that's a pretty long ways, right? And what they've done is put these tubes down all around, and when, the, when the, well, first of all, neutrino, I should tell you what a neutrino is, okay? It has no mass, uh, doesn't interact with anything, just goes right through everything, just travels right through the universe. We don't, they, they're trying to understand what they are, and they're trying to de de detect them. And it's not easy because there's no interaction. It just went through you a trillion times. Do you feel anything? No. So we don't know. You know, we're trying to figure out what it is. So how do you capture it and study it? They built this thing, and you've got like five of them. I had no idea that they have these things. Uh, Japan, has, of course, has the biggest one. Uh, but this ice cube, and when that neutrino comes through the earth, you've got to be in water to detect it. It needs a special kind of water. Uh, and they put these sensors down, and it'll light off one of these sensors right here, and then you can detect a neutrino. A lot of money going in to see a little spark of light. <laughs> and this is, uh, I'm not going to get in a lot of this, but there's 5,000 light sensors, and they're all floating uh, in, in the south under the ice. No, they're random. They're coming from the sun, usually. Uh, they, they're caused by nuclear reaction. I should tell you that, OK? I should have set up in the beginning. I, I took about 10 slides from 50 slides just to introduce the subject to you. And I'm just going to go over it real quick. But they're coming from solar. Uh, nuclear reactors put it out. Um, supernovas, big time. When the star goes boom. Our sun, big time. A lot of neutrinos coming through you. And they're usually for us, it's coming from either supernova 
a galaxy, some galaxy, neutron star, and but our suns, we get most of it from our sun. But there's other places that it's coming from. Like when those two neutron stars collided, that gravitational wave went and came a lot of neutrinos, man, because there was a nuclear reaction, right? If I hope I'm making sense. I'm not going to go into the, the detail if you guys are ever interested. And this is the light that that all those poles come, and when a, neutron, a neutrino comes through, it lights up. And that's the only way you can detect them. So now you're detecting detect them, what are you going to do with it? Well, that's a whole big, a lot of money going into it. Look inside. See the boat? This is the super uh, one in Japan. Look how those are all sensors. This is the boat with a guy in it. They're huge. And they go into caves because it's got to be away from... Uh, any light that's got to be in the middle of, like, you know, in a cave somewhere, and they, they form these big caves, and they put all these sensors in it, and uh, just to look for neutrinos. Here's another picture. Look at this. It's, it's amazing that they're spitting. That's a lot of money. There's a lot of money going into this. You wonder why. And I think it's because they think that there's a relationship between that and dark matter. So it's just beginning, uh, the research. Well, it's, it's been around for a while, but uh, uh, this is another one. And I just put this up because most every country, uh, let's see, Canada has one, Australia has one, uh, we have three, Russia's got one. So a lot of countries involved. Okay, this is my next one, but near Earth object. Who's worried about an asteroid? Nobody good. <laughs> huh? Well, they also would disagree. They're, they're launching, uh, I think it's already launched, uh, and they're going to shoot and do an asteroid coming in a path. It's not coming at us, but in a path, and they're going to see if they can deflect that. Remember, what's his name had a movie on this? Bruce, Bruce Willis. Remember that? They're doing it. All right. And I have a whole presentation. I'm going to end it there because I, wanna, I want you guys to see infrared. I want you to see what it looks like. And then I'm going to take questions. Anybody got a question? No, I bored you all to death. Okay. <laughs>